energy and chemistry, next phase of our, our conversation here. And who better to start that conversation than the inaugural Besky Innovation Fellow and President-elect of the Australian Academy of Science, Professor Andrew Holmes. Now, he returned to Australia as a Vesky Innovation Fellow after more than 30 years at Cambridge University, uh, where he and his team invented and commercialised a low-cost computer display. And upon returning, he was appointed University Laureate Professor of Chemistry in a new 100 million bio 21 molecular biology and biotechnology institute, and continued to apply the same ideas to create low-cost plastic solar panels. You may see more of that in a moment. Andrew was an honoured CSIRO fellow, it was awarded a Royal Medal in 2012, presented by the Council of the Royal Society. Andrew is also an avid supporter of international collaboration and spent many years promoting the importance of international networks and experience among Australian scientists and researchers. Professor Andrew Holmes. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jonathan. It's a real pleasure to be sharing the Vesky experience tonight with you. And the topic that I'm going to talk about is energy, and you will see the relationship to chemistry as we move on. The world's hungry for energy. It's unlikely that the human race will give up its thirst for consumption of energy, which really started after the Industrial Revolution and it's so important to match the kind of lifestyle to which we've become accustomed. It's predicted that by 2030, the world's demand for energy will have doubled from uh, around 2010. What's the situation in Australia? We use most of our energy is actually, uh, almost half of the energy we use is in the form of electricity. In 2011, 75% of our electricity was generated from burning coal. And of that, 23% uh, was burning brown coal, which of course sustained the tremendous industrial growth in Victoria since uh, Sir John Monash introduced the brown coal power stations here in Victoria. And it has led to enormous uh, wealth for this state. But now, Australia is the world's largest emitter of greenhouse gases at 16 metric tons per person per year. And that's in significant part due to the fact that brown coal doesn't burn very well, so we emit quite a lot of CO2 at the same time. Much more, for example, than if we burned a natural gas. So if we accept that greenhouse gases are the likely source of the gradual increase of the temperature of the Earth's surface, and I know there are many who doubt that assertion, but the evidence, as far as we can judge, is strongly in support of that correlation, then we've got to look to some other way of generating a, the electricity which we'll all want by 2030. And uh, there are many possibilities. I'm going to focus largely on the use of the sun, which is really the cheapest and most abundant source of energy in the planetary system. The Earth's surface receives on average between four and six kilowatt hours for each square centimeter every day. And you can, if you look at your electricity bill for a residence, you'll see that starts to become a serious source of uh, potential energy for el electricity. Now, switching back to Vesky, before I talk about my own experience, that's what Vesky is about. Vesky is about recruiting people, historically mostly Australians, back to Victoria uh, so that they can contribute to the science base of this state and more broadly to the, that of the nation. Uh, it's almost 10 years to the day since I was lucky enough to be awarded a Vesky Fellowship. And one of the things we have done uh, is to have picked up on the message that Alan has just uh, given us. We have formed a collaboration. Instead of letting all these individuals beaver away in looking at alternative sources of uh, harnessing the sun for uh, solar energy, we formed a network of individuals, particularly here in Victoria, but also widely connected across the country. And uh, the one that I'm going to talk about is a network 
the Victorian Organic Solar Cells Consortium, which involves a strong collaboration between the University of Melbourne, CSIRO, and I'm in, in associated with both institutions, and Monash University. So that's a good story in Victoria. And we formed a partnership with industrial partners, particularly Blue Scope Steel, who are really interested in having solar cells that are actually part of the roofing material, and Innovia. Uh, Innovia make the plastic and also do the printing of our plastic polymer banknote invented at CSIRO and exported to many countries around the world, even now in Canada, the first Northern Hemisphere country to adopt it, and also uh, soon to be in the UK five pound note. And also Bosch, who are of course a very big uh, company in electrical engineering products and were in solar cells, they've just moved away from that more recently. Now they were interested more in the silicon solar cells. Silicon solar cells, the ones which are in the marketplace, deliver energy conversion at an efficiency of between 10 and 15 percent. And the question we have to address is, are we doing something that will compete? Well, not yet, but we hope that we shall eventually. And that's inspired by the vision of the Victorian state government, who provided a large amount of funding, and also the federal government through the Renewable Energy Authority. Now we can make postage stamp size cell in the lab that work as well as that 10% target that is the silicon efficiency at the moment, the bottom of the silicon range. But what we want to do is print these on plastic, just like the way we print the banknote. And so the, again, you can see that association with the CSIRO experience of the polymer banknote and the company that prints them is hugely valuable in expanding our technology and capability. And if we can pull this off, I think we will create a real manufacturing opportunity here in uh, Victoria, and it will be the opportunity to re-harness and redeploy people who've come from other sectors which are no longer the leading manufacturing, uh, traditional manufacturing uh, organizations. Even if that doesn't work, we will have created a capacity of about a capability here of about 100 people who can work in this new field of plastic electronics. That is, electronics on plastic to substitute the traditional inorganic semiconductors which dominate the market at the moment. But where is that field of plastic electronics going? Well, I've talked about the printed solar cells, and I'll finish up by demonstrating one. But also flat screen TVs, which were mentioned in the introduction. Uh, if you look at the uh, Las Vegas Consumer Electronics Show, you'll see the big manufacturers demonstrating 50-inch diagonal uh, displays based on organic light-emitting display technology. And the most exciting one, linking back to the healthy aging, or at least healthy lifestyle, is this flexible electronics. You can now print transistors on plastic. You can create a helmet put on your head, so a cricketer or a footballer could put this on, uh, particularly a cricketer who's already wearing a helmet, and that will sense perhaps 80 different points of brain function simultaneously and transmit it back to, the, to someone in the medical center back on the ground. So when a sports person gets hit on the head with a potential brain trauma, you won't have to ask them what day it is or what their mother's name is because you'll have an, an instant readout from this plastic electronic helmet. That's where the technology is going. That's why it's so important that we should be creating the capability here in Victoria. And that's where the science from Vesky, the funding from science, is leading and why should, we should really rejoice in the inspiration of those who created this wonderful forward-looking organization. So those who aren't able to see what I'm doing, I have a little plastic solar cell and I have to use a powerful lamp to create sunlight. And I'm going to turn the lamp on and then I hope the fan will turn around. And it's a 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter squared printed, all printed solar cell on a plastic base. So that, fortunately, made the fan turn quite fast when I shined the light on it. But just to finish, I want to hand over to the next speaker, 
by rolling out the red carpet for him because these printed solar cells have this brilliant purpley red color. This is what one looks like on an A3 or A4 sized sheet. You can see it here. Now that doesn't work because we haven't connected it up to electrodes. And the one I'm going to show you is the printed film. So as I said, if you can't see it, it's a reddish purple color, perfect for the next speaker, the chairman of Vesky. And I'll roll that out to show just this printed film. Of course, it's nicely contained in a bag with Melbourne on it. And I'm going to introduce you, Snow, with a bit of printed solar cells and rolling it out.